Hello everyone, it is I7s and welcome back to another episode of Cyberpunk 2077 on the 7 show. Now time for my serious face. Also, if you're wondering what this is about, well, let's just say I've been getting up to no good and for some reason this window will not disappear. Now, if you're wondering what is today's episode going to be about, well, we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to do a more official, I guess in my eyes, build video. So if that puts a very weird smile on your face and you want to do a high DPS in a cheap way, let us get started. So you may have noticed that I have gotten some really good legendary weapons and I have finally gotten my smart shotgun. But no, we are not going to be doing a video on this gun uh, right now because we are going to work on the bread and butter that somehow happened with my build and that is me becoming overpowered with using a revolver or a pistol. It either work for what we're gonna do. So first, just get yourself a really strong pistol or revolver. Make sure that it has, in this one, it has 76 critical chance, and it has about 154 critical damage. Make sure it has both of those things. You really wanna make sure you have both of those things. Next, if you can find any pieces of gear that increases more of the critical chance and critical damage, that is exactly what you wanna go for. And I also have a little bit right here. I don't know if it caps out anywhere, but it, you know, with both of these, I find it really, really helpful. So from the start, I recommend getting this up as high as, you know, possible. This will help you just do increase, you know, blunt damage. Desperado is very useful for that. Next, on the fly, I feel like this is helpful because you can quickly, you know, target your enemies. Increasing your headshot with Rio Bravo is really important because, well, you'll just do more damage. Again, we are trying to make a stealthy sniper build so you can go in and kill everything as quickly as possible from a long distance. So this is another great perk that you should at least have one point in, if not two. This is a great saving perk in case you get spotted, but even if you don't, you can do extremely high damage. Again, playing with the critical damage, a fistful of Euro dollars will help you with this. This will remove how far, you know, you could be when hitting somebody. So using Wild West is important, as well as Steady Hand to make sure you land your hits without getting, you know, scared. And again, this one pairs very, you know, well with you know, grand finale, because if you are getting to the end of your rounds and you're worried that you're not going to be able to kill someone and they're getting weaker, but they're not dying, both of these would stack with each other. Now, the thing that made a lot of improvement early on when you don't have all the perks is actually going under the cool category and getting silent and deadly. I love using silencers, it makes it where I'm stealthy, so using this will increase your damage. And then I plan on using this as well because we're treating the revolver kind of like a sniper and trust me, it just makes all the sense to increase your damage this way. Now again, you might be wondering why a pistol? Why a legendary pistol? Why? And the reason for that is because it has everything to do with these guys right here. Okay, so let's take a look at a few things. When you get probably in Act 2 and you got some, you know, weapons that you could be buying, you'll notice something. So right here you can tell on the sides the different rarities of the weapons. And this very nice Carnage Power Shotgun that I wish I could have is, well, uh, let's see, 224,000 Euro dollars. I have 4,000. Getting 224,000 of anything seems to be very difficult. But look at this real quick. This tech pistol is like a little less than half that. And that's the thing. The pistols and the revolvers seem to be the cheaper of all of the legendaries. But when I got my hands on this, it allowed me to easily go finish missions and do stuff and allow me to get the money I need to finally buy my dream shotgun. Alright, so we have some bad guys right... Oh, oh no. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, oh no. This is not what I meant. Alright, well this is a great emergency situation. 
So let's see what the damage looks like in an emergency situation. 30,000 for a headshot. 5,000 for just, you know, a normal hit. 28,000. Woohoo! Okay, I'm excited. Okay, but now it's time to do the wheel test. So we saw before that I did about 30,000 damage. Wow, you're an angry person. But we forgot to account for the final round. 51,000 damage. And as you can see, you can easily snipe everybody. And uh, I think we cleared the entire area. I don't think there's anybody else. Okay, let's see if I could get the uh, single shot. Here we go. 52,000 damage. That is insane. Now, yes, this build does require being stealthy and taking your time with certain things. But I find it oh so fun. And you still do a fair amount of damage um, when you're just trying to hit them in the body, too. Stuff, 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 stuff. Everybody, stuff, 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 stuff. Anyways, yes, if I was going to improve this build beyond what we talked about, I would simply just get higher damage and critical chance and all that stuff gear and just spam the crap out of all that kind of stuff. You don't. Oh my god, that's Gladys. Hi, Gladys! But I think we're gonna end it here, folks. I think this shows exactly the build in progress. We made some, you know, progress in the game as well. So, I will leave in the description some of the key perks to use to really have this build fly off the shelf. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode where we will do some exploring and maybe, you know show you what I'm working on with my smart shotgun. Did a little teaser there a little bit ago, but anyways, I will chat with you later. If only we can make the mouth move. Alright, I'll see you later. Bye!